What is going on guys? Okay, so today we're going to be making this machine right here. This is a powered hacksaw. It uses an electric motor to push a blade back and forth and it cuts through steel like butter. So let's dive right into it. So first things first, the motor. I purchased a dirt cheap 230 volt hoist. Uh, it cost me around 60 bucks. These are nice because not only does the motor come with a nice gearbox, but you also get a nice control remote with an emergency stop button. This also contains the phase shifting capacitor for the motor. Uh, these are essential when you want to run a three phase motor like this one on single phase. Uh, the gearbox will reduce the speed and increase the torque. So here I'm just getting rid of the casing, the drum and the cable because all I'm interested in keeping is the motor and its gearbox. And here it is. Uh, so just for fun, I decided to take a look inside the gearbox and it turns out the gears are helical, uh, which is pretty nice considering the cost. It has plenty of grease to help lubricate the system, so I won't be adding any more. Next up, design. So I always like to design my stuff in CAD. Uh, here I'm using SolidWorks. As for the sizing of the profiles, I didn't run any stress tests on it or anything because I was unsure of the forces I was going to be dealing with, so I just pretty much eyeballed it. Now let's start building. So first I needed to cut all the steel tubing to the right length. Uh, of course, because I don't have any fancy cutting machine yet, I used the old dirty, loud and dangerous method of using the angle grinder. Of course, I'm using ear and eye protection. To square off the tubing, I used the table grinder and a lot of patience. So after permanently damaging my hearing and probably getting lung cancer, I had all the steel tubes cut to the right length and ready to be welded. Here I'm using a 400 amp MIG welder. I ran out of argon gas before shooting this video and because confinement I couldn't get any more so I had to use some leftover flux core wire. So this works just fine, it's just a bit messier and requires some extra cleanup. Next the rail. This one was particularly tricky to make because the rails had to be perfectly parallel to each other. To help line them up I 3D printed these guides. I had to be very careful when uh, welding these tubes because of thermal warping. To try and keep the rails as straight as possible, I only tack welded the tubes and sort of went back and forth with it, letting every weld cool down before welding the next one. Next up, the slider frame. Uh, this is what will clamp the bearings to the rail. I made four supports with a bit of angle bar to hold the bearings in a V configuration. These are the bearings I used, basic ball bearings from a pair of roller blades. Next, the blade holder. If you look at manual hacksaws, you'll see that they always have some kind of tensioning mechanism. So this makes installing the blade easy and straightens it out for cutting. Here, an M8 bolt simply pushes against the main blade bar. Finally, I needed to add a weight mechanism. This can act as a counterweight for more fragile blades or can be used to push down the blade which will increase cutting speeds. Once I had all the main components ready to go, with some help, I painted the steel to help protect it against corrosion and to make it look badass. Mainly to make it look badass. And now it's time to assemble it! Definitely for the first time ever! This nut is used to limit how far down the blade can go, it just prevents the machine from essentially destroying itself. As for the main pivot, I went with these bearing blocks. These are great because not only can they handle massive forces, but they remove all play which is essential for a machine like this. I got 10 of these for about 15 bucks and they do need to be far apart from each other to remove as much play as possible and to increase rigidity. Next, the slider is positioned on the rail. Four screws allow me to precisely clamp down the bearings on the rail without any play. And because the screws shouldn't be tightened, these rubber pads push against them and prevent them from unscrewing. Next, the blade holder is put together and is then mounted on the slider with four screws. You'll notice that the holes are way bigger than the screws, and this gives me some play to manually adjust the position and angle of the blade to ensure a perfect square cut, but I'll get back to that in just a second. Next, I could work on the crankshaft mechanism. So the reason why I drilled so many holes is because I wanted to be able to adjust the travel and the offset of the blade so that it could be adapted to different profiles and sizes. Uh, I welded the crank directly to the gearbox shaft. The pivots were again made with M8 bearing blocks. 
Well, at least they would have been if I hadn't been short of one. Because I didn't want to wait a month for new ones to be shipped, I went ahead and made my own using a 3D printed block and again, a ball bearing from that same pair of rollerblades. Finally, I screwed in a vice clamp using four screws. These need to be held on tight because there are a lot of forces being exerted onto it. Once that was done, all that was left to do was to install the blade. First off, let's just try a regular 30cm blade for manual hacksaws. And as you can see, everything works just fine. Well, for now. <laughs> I'll get back to that in just a second. Some grease is added to lubricate the mechanism, and this just prevents the bearings from cutting into the slider and makes everything nice and smooth. As you can see, the first cut worked like a charm. And of course the cuts weren't square yet, so using a triangular ruler and some spaces, I readjusted the clamp and the blade holder. After that, every cut was perfectly square. However, I was starting to run into some issues with the blade. Although the counterweight I was using almost completely cancelled out the weight of the slider assembly, the blade would still grip onto the steel and since the motor had no intentions of slowing down... Yeah... Even with a ton of WD-40, it would still work fine for a moment and then just snap instantly. Also, because of the counterweight, the blade would just barely push down on the steel, which meant that cutting speeds were less than impressive. So the solution was pretty simple. I needed a beefier blade. So I got this 50cm blade made for manual mitre saws. Uh, these are really nice because they are wider and thicker. Because my machine was designed for 30cm blades, I had to cut it to the right length and drill two holes. Since that blade was installed, I never ran into any problems again. This is a very cheap one, however, uh, I only paid about 10 bucks for it, and the teeth got pretty flat after a few cuts, but it still got the job done. To increase cut speeds, you basically have two options. You can push the blade down harder, but as we saw earlier, that will cause issues. Uh, if the blade doesn't snap, it'll definitely twist and bend and will result in a very unsquare cut. The other option is to increase the speed of the blade, therefore to increase the speed of the motor. Now, we could play around with the gearbox and we could try and remove some gears or add a chain drive, but I'm way too lazy for that. I own a 1.5 kilowatt VFD. Uh, I use this to control the speed of various tools in the workshop that use induction motors. I programmed it to run from 0 to 100 hertz. 100 hertz will basically double the speed of the motor. Now, keep in mind that when you increase the rotation speed of the motor, whether you use gears or a VFD, because the power consumption of the motor shouldn't change, uh, the output torque will decrease. That's why I chose a rather beefy motor to have plenty of headroom. Finally, I added four anti-vibration pads. These are pretty useful because the machine can get quite noisy and pretty annoying. Okay, so let's cut different materials and time each one. Let's start with something easy for fun. This is a 32mm PVC pipe and of course, cut right through it like butter. Next up, some 20mm aluminium pipe. Uh, a bit tougher than PVC, but still no match for the machine. And by the way, this is real speed. Next up, 22mm copper pipe. Again, a bit tougher than aluminium, but still cuts through it no problem at all. All right, now for something a bit more challenging. This is a 20 by 20 millimeter steel square profile. Here I did speed up the footage a bit. Of course, it takes a lot longer to cut, but got the job done after a little less than two minutes. Next, a piece of 30 by five millimeter steel bar. I found that it cuts a lot faster if you clamp it vertically like so. This one took about one minute and 13 seconds. Next up, a 30 by 40 millimeter steel profile. That yellow smudge you see me adding before each cut is a WD-40. This lubricates the blade and significantly improves its lifespan. This one took about 2 minutes and 47 seconds. Okay, now let's really push this thing to the limit. Let's try a piece of 52 by 15 millimeter steel bar. I had to speed up the footage quite a bit here. Also, I clamped this one down horizontally. Although it'll take much longer to cut than if I had clamped it vertically, 
uh, the cut should end up a lot more square. And this one took a whopping 27 minutes, but the cut ended up being perfectly square. Now, as usual, of course, in engineering, you never get it right on the first try. This particular machine is my third attempt. The first one was a really quick proof of concept thrown together in an afternoon to see if such a machine could actually cut through steel. But it was so poorly designed that the slider kept coming loose and I had to re-tighten it between each cut. Also, the wiper motor kept overheating and the whole thing needed to be clamped to the bench. The second one didn't use a slider, instead it used a lever mechanism. Uh, it would have worked just fine if it wasn't for one problem. I couldn't for the life of me align the blade with the direction of cut. This means that the blade would fold and bend like crazy to try and realign itself. Also, adding a counterweight would have been tricky with a mechanism like this. So I ended up just scrapping the whole idea. And there you have it! Conclusion time. Can we say this project was a success? Mm, not really. So if you consider the time, money, and effort I put into it, I would actually be a lot better off just getting a cheap miter saw. Also, recently I picked up this monster of a miter saw from a scrapyard for 50 bucks. Remember that piece of steel that took us uh, 27 minutes to cut? Well, this guy does it in less than 10 seconds. <laughs> so yeah, you know, even if it was a fun project, it's probably not the most practical of tools. But anyway, I hope you liked the video. Leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I shall see you guys next time.